Earth is under attack, not by humans, but by the very creatures humans themselves carried across the planet. In their desperate attempt to fix what they broke, people turn to every possible solution, even the most extreme ones, spraying toxic chemicals and using electric shocks. But of course, that only made the disaster worse. Once again, nature stepped in to teach humanity a lesson, a real lesson about ecological recovery. Beneath layers of thick mud, tiny organisms are struggling to restore balance. Meanwhile, on the surface, artificial intelligence sensors and hidden cameras record every movement, while environmental DNA technology decodes invisible biological traces in the water. Could this powerful combination truly save the planet from invasion? And why are these tiny creatures being called Europe's last hope? Let's begin right now. What's destroying our planet just as powerfully as hurricanes, floods, or earthquakes are the invaders. Yes, the very creatures humans carried all over the world. Take a look at the United States, a country that seems to have everything under control. Yet when it comes to invasive species alone, America loses more than $21 billion every year. Billions. Just because of creatures, most people don't even know by name. And worse, once they caused disasters in the United States, they didn't stop. They spread to Africa and Europe. The situation grew even more serious in the 1960s when Europe imported signal crayfish from North America. People thought it would be the savior of the seafood industry. But as you know, things that sound good often turn out to be the most dangerous. The crayfish brought with them the crayfish plague, a disease that kills 100% of native crayfish on contact. Terrifying, isn't it? Today, 28 European countries are paying the price. Estonia, the land of hundreds of freshwater lakes, has become one of the hottest battlegrounds. By the time you're watching this documentary, many areas have already lost their native crayfish completely. Invasive crayfish eat everything, worms, snails, bottom-dwelling insects, even fish eggs. When the bottom layer of the ecosystem disappears, birds and fish above starve in massive numbers. A study in Germany found that when a single invasive species, Faxonius immunus, appears in high density, the entire bottom-dwelling animal community is thrown into chaos. And you know what that means? When the foundation collapses, how can the house stand? They dig tunnels, hollow out the riverbanks, and cause the soil to cave in, forcing farmers to pay the price. The water becomes cloudy, sunlight decreases toxic algae bloom, and lakes turn into dead zones. You lose your fish to catch and your birds to watch. In Scotland alone, the fly fishing tourism industry loses millions of dollars every year. And that's nothing compared to the total damage, 13 to 21 billion dollars across Europe, roughly equal to the entire defense budget of countries like Hungary or Portugal. And here's the truly chilling part, these crayfish also carry parasites that cause liver cancer in fish-eating species. Which means in the end, it's humans who will suffer the consequences. Of course, humans never just stand by and watch. Estonia has tried every possible method from the extreme to the innovative. But the results have all been the same. We spread poison, but the flowing water washes everything away before it can kill anything. The crayfish survive and almost seem to mock us. We set traps, but only about 2 or 3% get caught, while the remaining 97% keep multiplying like they're throwing a party at the bottom of the lake. You think we ran out of options? Not yet. We tried electric shocks, but it was useless because they hide deep under the cold mud. We built barriers, but in Switzerland, crayfish climbed out of the water, clung to algae, and escaped like ninjas breaking out of prison. It's like building a wall to stop thieves only to find out they're coming through the roof instead. That's exactly how conservationists felt. Even when we dredged the lake bottoms and destroyed their burrows, they came back within just a few months like an immortal army, gone in the morning, back by the afternoon. Humanity was powerless against the very species it had released. Humans were powerless, but nature was not. This is what scientists finally realized. Estonia was forced to rely on one creature, known as an ecosystem engineer, the European eel. 
a species we once hunted so heavily that its population dropped by 90% in just 40 years. They were blocked by dams that stopped their migration poisoned by pollution that ruined their blood, overfished, and sold for tens of thousands of dollars on the black market. Why? Because eels were born to hunt invasive crayfish. They move at night exactly when crayfish leave their burrows. They can sense their prey in the dark. And most importantly, they prefer to attack small individuals, the very group that human traps can't catch. That's not all. Eels have two types of heads, broad-headed and narrow-headed. The broad-headed ones have such incredible jaw strength that they can crush a crayfish shell as easily as cracking a peanut. Experiments in Estonia showed that broad-headed eels eliminated 83% of their targets, while narrow-headed eels reached 33%, still far better than any method humans had ever tried. And then came the detail that sent chills even down the spines of veteran scientists. The life of an eel is a cosmic mystery. They reproduce in the Sargasso Sea, the same region covered by Bermuda Triangle legends. For over a hundred years, no one has ever witnessed them mating in the wild. In laboratories, one eel once lived 88 years without ever reaching maturity. They also dig burrows that provide shelter for more than 30 other species. They feed on dead animals cleaning the riverbeds. They migrate from the ocean into rivers transporting nutrients across continents like living trucks carrying life itself. And that's all just theory. Now let's look at the real experiment conducted by the Estonian University of Life Sciences, which began in October 2023. Six plastic tanks, each nearly 35 cubic feet, were set up equipped with full filtration systems, protective nets underwater cameras, for 24-7 monitoring and cool blue LED lights to allow observation without stressing the eels. 21 broad-headed eels and 21 narrow-headed eels were brought in from Lake Varvi and had to undergo more than two months of adaptation from November 8, 2023 to January 16, 2024. But as you might expect, scientific experiments are never perfect. Once they got used to the environment, the broad-headed eels began attacking their own kind, as if declaring, the weak don't belong here. Researchers had to reduce their numbers to just four individuals per tank, forming elite special forces teams. From January 17th to March 21st, 2024, six test rounds were carried out with one clear goal to see how eels handled the invaders. The prey this time marbled crayfish and signal crayfish the same species responsible for real-world ecological disasters. Each round lasted from 6 to 32 days, and every movement was captured by the underwater cameras. The results were crystal clear, broad-headed eels wiped out 83% of the crayfish, while narrow-headed eels, though still strong fighters, managed only 33%. This massive difference proved one thing the broader the head, the stronger the jaw, and the stronger the jaw, the easier it is to crush a crayfish shell, like snapping a crunchy snack. Even more fascinating, the eels showed a preference for invasive crayfish over native species, especially those under 2.8 inches long, exactly the group that human traps fail to catch. You see now, don't you, nature has created the perfect ecological engineer to fill the gap in a battle humans have fought and lost to exhaustion. Of course, no matter how rigorous lab results alone can't be fully convincing, because out in the wild, everything changes. The darkness is deeper, the mud thicker, and the enemies far more numerous. That's why in 2024, Estonia did what no other country dared to do. They released their eel warriors into real battle. Thousands were sent to two hotspots, Ropka Reservoir and Rio Quarry. They were no longer research specimens, but the last army standing between native ecosystems and collapse. The moment the eels were released into the water, the tension was electric. Scientists stood at the shore nervous, as if waiting for a spacecraft to land on Mars. Either a savior would rise or failure would swallow everything. But could the eels truly turn the tide? No one knows yet. No reports, no recovery charts, 
only silence, anticipation, and a fragile hope. But humans did not leave everything to nature. A new weapon had been activated biotechnology. Instead of searching blindly through lake bottoms, scientists began collecting eDNA or environmental DNA, the genetic traces left behind in water, to identify exactly which creatures had passed through. A single water sample can reveal how many invasive crayfish are still alive and whether the army of eels is advancing or struggling. Thanks to this technique, Estonia can now build underwater infection maps like a Google Maps for invaders helping pinpoint hotspots while cutting costs by up to 70%. And with hidden sensors and cameras, researchers can track where the eels go each night when they strike and whether they're brave enough to break through into enemy territory. Remember we mentioned earlier that this invasive species has already spread to 28 European countries. This battle isn't confined within Estonia's borders. The whole continent is waking up to an enemy spreading underwater like a silent pandemic. Since 2019, Denmark has released more than 1.6 million young eels into 62 water bodies at a cost of $467,000. In Scotland, fishing tourism once brought in millions of dollars each year, but after invasive crayfish turned rivers into battlefields, locals could no longer catch fish. The only solution left is to restore eel populations and let the ecosystem defend itself again. Switzerland, however, chose a different path building barriers to stop the crayfish. 30 defensive lines were constructed along rivers like biological Berlin walls in hopes of halting the invaders' advance. But you already know how this goes, crayfish are excellent climbers. And if they manage to cross, then Europe will have to come up with an even bolder plan. Yet this raises a moral dilemma. Do we even have the right to release eels to kill crayfish? This is the ethical battle dividing conservationists. One side argues that invasive species must be destroyed to save the environment. The other side fires back asking, are we really executing one species to fix our own mistakes? You see, the European eel is not an ordinary creature. Its population has already declined by 90% in just over 40 years. A warrior on the brink of extinction is being pushed to the front lines. Can we really save an ecosystem by sacrificing another species? And the risks never end. If one day the invasive crayfish disappear or their numbers drop too low to serve as a food source, what will happen then? That's right, the eels might start feeding on native species, and the cycle of disaster will begin all over again. Meaning, instead of one problem, we'll have two. And there's an even worse scenario. If the eels fail to defeat the crayfish, we could lose both species. A weakened ecosystem would face yet another double loss. So what would you choose let nature decide or keep interfering because we believe we're doing the right thing? Share your thoughts in the comments. From one small human mistake, the entire European ecosystem is paying the price. Billions of dollars, lost lakes slowly dying, and invasive species spreading like a plague. Yet in the middle of despair, nature offers us a glimmer of hope. The European eels, silent warriors, beneath the surface, are fighting to restore balance to our planet. Will humanity learn to trust nature before it's too late? Share your thoughts below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to discover more extraordinary stories from our planet.